Hi everybody, so in video 1869 we made this, which is our serpentine generator and in the comments two of the most popular questions were how would it go with the flywheel and can you turn it into a motor? Now, I burble on a lot about motors and generators being electrically identical machines so the um, answer to the question can it be a motor is uh, an uncategorical yes, of course it can be a motor if it's a generator it can be a motor but Saying one thing and doing that thing are two different things. So I've got a really simple setup. All I've got is a DC power supply and it's going into one side of the generator and the generator just has a bare wire. So I'm going to touch these two bare wires together and what that will do is pulse a DC into the coil. So let's do that and see what happens. So there you go, a motor can be a generator and a generator can be a motor and by pulsing a DC we change that into a motor. Now granted it's not the world's best motor, it's not going to be running your Lexus anytime soon because we relied on the same thing that a steam engine relies on. The steam engine has a bit of a push and then a flywheel that gets going that gets it over the bit where it's not pushing and we did exactly the same. We put a pulse of DC in there that changed these coils into a magnet. Remember there are permanent magnets right here and that gave it a bit of a shove. Then we took the DC away and because there's nothing else in here this continued as a flywheel to the next position when we gave it another shove by pulsing some DC in. In the same way that a steam engine gets a shove of the piston gets to the bottom, there's nothing happening, the flywheel carries it around the bottom and back up until we let more steam in that gives it another shove. So it works on the same principle as a very simple oscillating steam engine so it's not going to be the greatest engine because we're shoving it, turning it off, shoving it, turning it off. Much better is we continued to shove it all the way around and we can do that instead of having one coil we would have three coils where we use one coil to shove to the next coil then that coil to shove and then the third coil to shove and keep on shoving it all the way around. That is exactly how a three phase motor works. So this is like a three phase motor but using a single phase. Now we have another issue that you might not have noticed. It's timing. I have to shove it at the right time because if that magnet is here and I shove it, it may go that way. If it's there and I shove it, it may go that way. I need to get in the right position to give it the shove in the right direction otherwise the motor will turn any which way and will reverse its turn halfway through as well so I practiced a little bit before the video to get the timing right of hitting that switch because touching two wires is the same thing as hitting a switch when I hit the switch at the right time it will continue to turn in the right direction now Touching two wires being a switch is actually a really important issue because of course a transistor is nothing more than a switch. It's just an electronic switch where I can switch that pulse of DC in. Now if I had a sensor here where well, something like an LED, an infrared LED going to an opto sensor, I could time it so that I shove it at exactly the right time. Now that's what makes a good brushless motor. So it's a, just a brushless motor where I'm physically timing it by touching a switch. If I want to make it electronic timing then I would tie in a sensor with a transistor to switch on the power supply and give it a shove at exactly the right time. Another sensor is called a hole, sen hole sensor which recognizes where the actual magnets are. An LED would recognize the position of the rotor the hole sensor would recognize the position of the magnet and the hole sensor works in the same way as this coil. When the magnet comes close to it you get a spike. That spike can be said oh there's the magnet to something like an Arduino controller. So with sensors on and a switch we can actually make this run as a brushless motor in the same way that I just did but using my hands and I and just knocking the switches against each other. So that's how you go about making a brushless motor and of course this generator is of course a motor. Anyway, let's see that again.
<laughs> I just think that's brilliant actually. So with a single coil, it's actually a bit difficult to get the timing right to be honest. Um, with two coils though, it's a piece of cake. And in fact, that two coil arrangement that you would use to drive this as a motor is exactly what you find in a PC fan. So that little circuit board in there would drive that motor if you put two coils on. If you put three coils on, of course, what you've got is a standard three-phase brushless motor, the kind of thing that you find in um, e-bikes these days. The control electronics for that, where it all um, really sits, you can buy online. There's one right there. Now, I don't know if you noticed in the animation where I did the three-phase, there was a little thing called an induction spike. That induction spike can also be used as a position center, sensor if you're not using hall sensors. These use hall sensors, incidentally. But that induction spike can be used, and these are what use that induction spike to tell it what position it is in. That's about five pounds off Amazon. It's a three-phase brushless motor controller that you get for RC models. And then you get a little speed circuit there. I think it's about a pound or something like that. You wire the three coils up to each other on one leg and then the open leg you put to each one of these and that, with that, is your three-phase motor controller and it'll cost you about six pounds or so. So making two-phase and three-phase motors, brushless motors, out of this arrangement actually is um, pretty simple and I think that if you fancy giving that a go it's a bit of a challenge for you but you have all of the information that you need in order to construct a three-phase brushless motor from your own printer. And I'm, I probably will do that as a project myself at some other time, but I wanted to cover the principles of how this works because I was asked, can this generator be a motor? And I wanted to demonstrate that, yes, it can, talk about the principles, and then maybe later construct a three-phase brushless motor out of this thing and see how that bad boy spins up. Or if anybody beats me to it, then I'd love to see your video on it, so certainly send me the video if you make your own three-phase brushless motor, because it's really very simple to make this serpentine generator into a serpentine motor, and that would be very cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.